We're going to get underway, um, and our first speaker is uh, Andrew Lemoyne. He, again, from Ottawa. I'm very honored to have him come up from my hometown, from uh, Barhaven area in Ottawa, by, by the Barley Mow where I used to bounce many, many, many years ago. Um, not cool. <laughs> it was like bouncing in an old rock bar. Um, Andrew is the CEO of Car Loans Canada. He's very innovative in when it comes to technology and also communication. Being a younger guy and passionate about communication, it's important that we, um, we understand that and, and have him here. He is an innovator in his field. It's going to be a lot of fun watching his presentation because we had to use an i. We kind of had to screw it up on him. We had a computer, and now it's on an iPad. So, please forgive us. But um, let's give a huge Toronto welcome to Andrew Lemoyne and his crew. You watch me struggle with the iPad. This is cool. This is unbelievable. I think this is one of the sweetest uh, events I've ever been to. I struggle with this HDMI to Thunderbolt connector. I don't know if anybody else has ever been through this. Like, I'm going to go buy five of these things and just stuff them in every bag I own. Because we showed up. Jason thought he grabbed the, uh, the, uh, the HDMI to Thunderbolt connector for the, the Mac, and then it was a USB-C, because Apple loves to do that. They like to innovate and make us spend more money. Uh, Gary Vee says, you know, I'm in the business of always trying to put myself out of business. Um, five years ago, I had no idea what that meant. Okay. It's a pretty diverse room. It's not all dealers. So whatever industry you're in, whatever your business is, I'd like you guys to think of a competitor, a product that if it were to come out to market, it would seriously disrupt your business. Okay, so whatever it is you do, I want you to think of a product that if it were to come out to market, it would seriously disrupt and scare the shit out of your business. Now, whatever that was, dude, this thing's just playing. I'm done. Um, now, whatever it was that you guys just thought of, um, now I want you to think that how could you actually build something like that and create it, whatever it is that you just thought of that scares the shit out of you, okay, that could disrupt your business. Because if you don't, one of your competitors will. So what I want to talk to you guys about today is strategic innovation, okay? Yeah, you know, Mark Cuban says you got to work like there's somebody out there working 24 hours a day to take it all away from you because there is. You know, some of the most uh, amazing companies in the world are built on the foundation of innovation. That's all they do, okay? It's built into the, to the foundation of the culture of the company. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, I want to talk about how you guys can strategically innovate in your dealership or in your company, whatever your business may be. My goal today is not to talk about process. It's not to talk about you know, demo drives or ups or sales process. We have an incredible speaker that flew all the way in from the USA to talk to you guys about process and how technology will not fix a broken ass process, which I 100% agree with. My goal today is to try to shift your mindset a bit, get you guys thinking a little differently about innovation and how to approach it. Okay, it goes in a lot of what JP was already talking about. It was funny because he kind of recited to me half my pitch before we even got started. And it was totally on, he had no idea. He was just talking about, why don't more dealers do this? And I said, that's exactly what I want to talk about today. I'm going to share with you kind of my story um, on where I really got a big eye opener and, and woken up to how important innovation really, really is. The neat part is I don't care what kind of dealer you are. I don't care if you're a used car dealer, if you're a new car dealer, uh, if, if you're big, if you're small. Um, 
you know, in this digital age today, in this digital world, innovation is open to anybody. Anybody can make a go at it. This is so funny, man. I'm usually making fun of the people that are up there clicking. So a little bit about me. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to get into too much of this. Um, look, I got, I got it. It's this because it's about you guys. I got in the car business in 2004. Okay. I spent over a decade in automotive retail, started off as a detailer, worked my way up to general manager. Okay. I did most roles and positions in between. Um, four years ago, I left retail and I started a company. I also didn't have any gray hair when I did that. Um, it was quite, uh, it was quite the learning curve. Okay. So I started, a, I, I, I had this brilliant idea that I was going to get into the insurance business. Okay. I was going to create an aftermarket warranty product to serve independent dealers. Cause I said, this is really under service and there needs to be a, you know, a killer kick ass, uh, extended warranty to, to serve independents. Anyways, that didn't work out. Spent a year, a year spinning my wheels with that, working with insurance companies that didn't work. Then we pivoted to training. Okay, so I started doing training. Training was okay for, for what we were really looking to accomplish. It wasn't scalable enough, um, and it was really, really difficult to find people that were capable of training, just like I'm sure you guys all experience every day how hard it is to actually find great salespeople, great coaches, great managers, right? So we could all relate to that. So I pivoted again, and um, we really started to get into technology. Okay, so what I did is we actually acquired a company two years ago now called Car Loans Canada. And if you guys think dealerships are competitive, try to start a lead gen company. Okay. This is one of the most saturated competitive markets in marketing period. Like, you know, you, you talk to Jason, he'll tell you like auto finance keywords, just like in, in general, I mean, against everything, these are some of the most expensive keywords out there. It's some of the most expensive stuff to market. Okay. So look, we found out real quick, like everybody, like, you know, the, the, the sunshine wore off real fast. We acquired the company. We were going to make this big mark. We we're going to blow this thing up overnight and we got shit kicked. Okay. When we went out to market, when we went out to marketing, like when we went, when we started uh, executing our paid ad, okay. Uh, we got slaughtered. We thought we knew what we were doing. We had no idea what we were doing. Okay. We were, trying to generate applications and leads at CPAs under $40. We had months where we had $500, $600 CPAs. So we had no idea what we were doing. Um, I also realized that we're going up against everybody. So we're going up against dealers uh, on their paid ad. We're going up against OEs. We're going up against banks. So I'm, we're going up against all these giants. Okay. And we needed to do something and we need to do something quick or that venture was not going to start working out the way we had, uh, we had hoped that it would. Um, you know, what, what ended up happening was, sorry, this thing is just glitching out on me here. Um, we were, we went from three employees with that business to 20 in, in less than a year. We grew the business 850% in its first year. Okay. And we did that because we realized the only way to actually win is to innovate. You see, we couldn't play by the rules of the game that existed because we would have lost. We actually had to change the rules, right? We had to approach it all differently to the point where we actually don't even consider ourselves a lead gen company. Many dealers today still do until they see what's coming. We made a pivot about a year ago. We said, no, we're a technology company. Okay. Because the only way we're actually going to impact this space and this industry and do what we've set out to do with auto finance is through innovation. Okay. I, we cannot take these guys on head, head dollar for dollar and paid ad. Okay. And even if we could, it's actually a stupid strategy and it, uh, and it, it, it's not yielding a great experience for the customers. It's not, which is in turn, not yielding a great experience for the dealers. Everybody's paying for a bunch of clickbait crap. Conversion rates are at an all time low. So this is not what we want to do. Like we don't want to be in this business of selling these leads that have a 5% conversion. Okay. We're not here to be like the other guys. We're here to change the game. Right. So so we've been <laughs> we, sorry. So all I can do is laugh. Like, this is nuts. I know. <laughs> Harris gave me the 30 second rundown. So look, we're um so we we started to strategically innovate and I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. I'm saying we, not I. Okay, because the goal is not to have one person in your business or your company that innovates, it's to have a 
company that innovates, a team that's always thinking of innovation constantly. How can we make the experience better for the customer, right? How can we make our process, our product better, right? And, 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 and this is happening in groups. So as a team, we pulled 911. We are like, look, we need to start innovating, okay? And we made the decision that we're actually going to be a fintech company. So, sorry guys. Checking your yeah, text <laughs> messages, LinkedIn actually. Um, yeah, so anyone and everyone on your team should be encouraged to innovate, okay? What's going on? Oh, it works there too, okay. Thanks for telling me. So I want to get you guys in the habit of getting everybody in your dealership or in your business to start thinking about innovation. Okay, and I want to talk about five strategies that you can do to really make that happen and just really breed an innovative culture inside of your business. Okay? Number one is get new voices. So what does this mean? You guys got to get around people that have completely different life and professional experiences than you. I find in automotive so many times we have the blinders on. You know, it's just always automotive. We're only connecting and networking with other automotive professionals. We're not venturing out. Hiring, you know, one of the biggest things I see is looking for salespeople, um, you know, must be OMVIC certified. I see that so many times in the, in the Ontario dealers ads, right? It's like you only want to hire people that have already done it. You're not looking to actually branch out and hire people and bring people in from other industries. Because if you were to bring them in, you're actually gonna get some new voices around you. And what that, what's that, that's gonna do is that's actually gonna create some new ideas, right? So a personal story I have is back when I was running the sales team at one of the dealerships, we had a really young, high energy sales team. And I was, I was making a really good go of hiring inexperienced, just enthusiastic salespeople that had no experience before just give them to me hungry, give them to me, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hire the attitude and I'll train the skill. I live and die by that, okay? So we had this team of millennials and, you know, at times it was nuts, but we were just crushing it. Like we were killing it, we were, we were just hitting targets at the park. And one day, I had this middle-aged gentleman walk in and apply for a sales role. And he had never been in automotive before. Did not fit the culture at all. Right away, I'm like, he's totally not going to fit in with the team. This is going to be entertaining. Um, never spent a day in the auto business. Got, he came from IT, right? So he's doing IT sales for like 25 years. And he was like negative. Like he was like pessimistic. And, and I'm like, I don't know why. I just, I, I like you, you know? And I'm going to give you a shot. I'm going to bring you in. And I, we brought him in. And this guy became the board leader within like 60 days. Okay, and it was one key thing, and it was something that I had never been taught. I had never been trained, okay, as a GSM, that this is an important element of the business that you should be focusing on, which is actually outbound. You see, this gentleman came from an industry where he only got to eat what he killed, okay? He was a hunter. I had a team of people that just knew how to take inbound calls, that knew how to greet the customers walking in the showroom. Nobody was hunting, you know? We were never trained to actually pick up a phone. All of a sudden I got this, this IT salesman in here delivering 25 cars a month because the guy is prospecting. And I'm like, what the hell have we been doing? Like we've been actually missing the boat here. So, you know, he's going through service lists. He's, he's pulling up lease maturity. He's pulling up finance maturity. He's pounding, he's making outbound calls. And this whole light bulb went, went off in my head about you know, the whole notion of a BDC center. Is I'm like, this, this is nuts. Like we should, like, think of the activity, think of the people we could actually reach in a day. These skills, by the way, would serve me very, very well many years down the road with our company now. Okay, because it's one of the biggest uh, reasons we've been able to achieve the success as quick as we have, is our inside sales team, right? This never would have happened if I actually hadn't taken a, a risk and brought somebody in from another industry because we weren't being trained to do that. You know, we were being trained to desk with the four square and, 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 and you know, do the, uh, do, do the old school sales process. And that was it. And that's all I was shown. And I only knew what I knew. Right? So you got to get new voices. In our business today, we brought Jason in, our director of operations, from the restaurant industry. 
people said, what are you doing? He's a chef. Jason was the executive corporate chef of the Shore Club restaurants. I don't know if you guys have ever been to the Shore Club. There's one on Bay and there's one downtown Ottawa. He was the executive corporate chef. I brought him in the company as the director of operations. Well, that was for you. They said, uh, they said what, like, what are you doing? I said, no, I've done this before. I'm going to bring somebody in from another, from another industry. He's going to bring a whole new perspective to the company. Okay? I also knew that kitchens are insane. Like, you want to talk about high pressure? You want to talk about you know, nail-biting moments, $800 steaks being dropped, this getting sent back, this was undercooked, this is contaminated. Like, it's stressful. We're a startup. Like, every day is stressful. He's going to know how to deal with this. We brought Jason in. In the first six months, the company grew by 30 35%. Right? I got around new voices. I brought somebody else in from another industry, brought a whole new perspective to our business. And you guys can do the same thing. New questions. What happens when you ask new questions? You get new answers, right? You guys got to change the questions because you got to change questions determine what you're putting your focus on, okay? So, you know, back when Bill Gates was building Microsoft, he didn't ask the question that every other software company asked, which was, how can we build software for computers, right? He asked his team, how can we build so the software that's going to power every computer in the world? That's what he asks. He has a monster question like that. He was just saying, how can we build software? Hey guys, welcome. You know, I'll bring it back, man. Um, you know, instead of, uh, instead of asking yourselves a generic question like, you know, why can't we sell more cars? You know, try asking something like, you know, how can we become the easiest dealer to buy a car from in our town, in our city? You know, um, how can we make our store the easiest store to take a demo drive at? Right? More importantly, question everything. It's not just about the questions you're asking. Question everything. Because what we do is we get so on autopilot mode, okay? And we don't question these processes. So what's happening is like, Everything is a change, changing, right? The market's evolving, tech is evolving, consumer experience is evolving, the websites, the products, but all this is evolving and we're not actually questioning the processes that are going on in our own stores, in our own businesses, right? So, you know, why do we still ha handle incoming internet leads like this? Like, is this, should we still be handling like this or maybe we, should we have a look at this? Maybe we should take a, take a look at that, right? You know, does it make sense we're still serving numbers like this today in 2019, soon to be 2020? Does that make sense? I'm just trying to ask is somebody in the business question. I'm not saying if it's right or wrong. Maybe you guys are doing a great job. Maybe you're not. But what you need to do is you need to question it. That's all I'm saying. You just need to put a focus on, on challenging everything. It's funny when we're kids, we challenge everything. Somewhere along that just stop you. We stop challenging everything. We ask questions. My six-year-old daughter, except Cole Hicks, he asks a lot of questions. Still do. Yeah. I do because I need to question everything because I need to understand it. Right? I need to challenge it. I need to challenge it. New perspectives. How do you get new perspectives? You get in new environments. Okay? We go to a lot of networking events. A lot. Okay? So in Ottawa, we take, you know, Jesse's on our team. He's actually, uh, you know, he helps organize one of the LinkedIn locals. We go out, I would say, almost weekly. You know, the week felt weird if we didn't attend one networking event, okay? So we're out there, our team's out there. It's became a huge recruitment tool for us, okay? We built pretty much the entire company at networking events. That's where we've met just really skilled, talented people, people that actually, quite frankly, wouldn't have applied to the startup, right? Had we not been able to meet them in person and, and just make that connection, transfer that energy, share our vision with them. I go to a lot of networking events, guys, and I meet a lot of people from different industries, different walks of life. I'll tell you the one industries that I never bump into, dealers. I never bump into dealers at these things, ever. There's no one in automotive that's going to these tech meetups. We were at a FinTech convention last night. There was like 300 people. There wasn't one dealer there, okay? There's, there's, a, there's a tech TO conference happening Monday night here on Lakeshore. It's going to be over 500 people. I bet you not one automotive dealer staff members there. You going to be there? Okay. You know, you're the exception, not the rule. So sorry, JP's there. 
I stand corrected. <laughs> but, you, but you see what I'm saying, right? No dealers are going out to these things. There's great people here. There's really bright minds. There's answers that you need at these events. Okay, you're not going. I'll tell you what a lot of networking organizations are always looking for. They're always looking for hosts. Okay? I can think of a business that has a lot of space, a lot of square footage, a damn dealership. You know? I go to all these networking events. They're being hosted by this restaurant put it up this time. This, this SaaS company put it up this time. This, this insurance company put it up this time. We're all crammed in these little cubicle offices, 300 people. I'm going, man, I wish we were in the freaking poor showroom right now. Right? Move a couple cars out of the way. Boom, you got your networking event. Dealers could be sponsoring these networking events. You guys get a lot more involved in your communities with this stuff. You want to tap in. You want to tap into this because it's where it's heading. I'm not a guy that's going to stand up here and tell you to fear digital retail and tomorrow everything's going to check out. It's not happening. It's not happening like that. It's not happening that quick. Okay, but there is evolution and there's a lot of change. And the lines between technology and the auto industry are getting closer and closer and more merged every single day that passes. Okay? I've yet to really come across only big dealer groups. I've yet to come across dealerships that have developers. I see so much wasted space up to, uh, on the second floors of dealerships. I, I always ask, what are you doing up there? Like, what do you got going on there? Is it BDC? Yeah, there's like three BDCs, and that's kind of like, I don't know, like the snow pros go there and stuff, and like the old, <laughs> the old sales signs. Like, you know what I mean? We put like the old promo shit that we're never going to use again. Like, it's, so like, you know, software developers are some of the, you know, the most in-demand employees right now to hire, period. You know, you got companies like Shopify that are just doing anything they can to recruit these people. Why? Because they can actually create your ideas, right? They can bring them to life. And as technology is evolving, a lot of these things are actually becoming a lot easier to create. So what, you know, once took a team of seven developers to build, you know, you guys can get it done with like one person with, with, with the new tech, technologies and stuff. So, you know, new perspectives. Um, new passions, right? Like, I don't think anybody got into the auto business, like, intentionally. You know when we all did the kindergarten thing? And, like, you know, what do you want to be when we're all there? Like, there was no, I've yet to see the car salesperson, right? Like, we were all freaking astronauts and veterinarians, right? Like, that's what it was. No one, like, set out to, I'm going to get an automotive and, and this is what I'm going to do. So what happens is we end up all kind of getting into the business usually by accident, right? We, we kind of got into it by accident. We needed a damn job. We wanted to make some money. That's why we got into it. Andrew, why'd you get into it? You need some money, man. Started washing cars and said, frig this. I'm looking at the lazy salespeople. I'm going, I can sell cars. Started selling cars, right? What was your passion? I don't know, money? Like, I wanted to make some money. I wanted to do something, right? Yeah, exactly, right? But what happens is, you know, as you get more and more into the business, and, and, and your career is evolving, you guys need to ignite some passion and some fire, right? You need to become passionate. You didn't get into it passionate. You didn't get into the car business to save the damn world. I know you didn't, okay? But now that you're in it, you can get passionate about something, right? We obviously work with a lot of credit dealers, okay? So a lot of dealers that, you know, work leads, a lot, a lot, a lot of dealers have been doing that for many, many, many years. And what I'm seeing is, I'm seeing a lot of new subprime dealerships opening. Okay, we're seeing a lot of them. Like they're popping up like they, at a rate that they never were in the past. But I'm actually seeing a lot of these new players that are coming to the market, they're winning. Okay, they're actually winning. They're beating the dealers that have been doing it for so many years. And I've got real examples of new kind of credit focused dealerships that are working about 300 leads a month that are out delivering the, the dealership that's working about a thousand leads a month that's been in business for 15 years. I'm going, this is crazy, what's different? Well, I can tell you one thing, the owners of these organizations are passionate. See, they, actually use, they, they usually came from these stores that have been around and then they left to start their own thing, right? Because they were pissed off about something. And when they were pissed off, they lit a fire, right? And they said, like, it's almost a little envious, right? Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show these guys, but they got they got excited, right? And they got passionate about making a mark, making a difference, okay? So they got passion, they got ethics. I've never met Sean. I've never met him until five minutes ago. I can't wait to see this guy speak. His freaking, this guy is so passionate about helping dealers. It bleeds through the videos on LinkedIn. 
I'm like, this guy is the real deal. He actually gives a shit. You can't say that he doesn't, right? You guys need to get passionate about what you're doing in your business. I don't know what it is, right? If it's a dealer, you know, you need to get passionate about helping people ethically. Okay, stop, stop trying to smoke people and put them to sleep. Like those, you, you, it doesn't, it never works out. You know that. It's always, it's never the marathon play, guys, right? That, that's always short-term thinking. You guys got to start thinking long-term. You actually have to start helping people, right? So it's a lot easier, easier when you're passionate about it because one thing that I find a lot of dealers lack is energy. You know, we walk in these dealerships, there's just a lack of energy. There's no music on. It's dead. It's dreadful. You know, it's like, dude, what's going on? Like, get some, like, I, I'm in and I'm just like, I'm like ADHD, D, D. But like, I walk in, I'm like, yo, like, let's get some music on. Let's, the, the devs at our company hate me because I, I put this freaking radio. I actually went out and bought this serious XM big radio on the dev side. And because uh, the place is like, it's just eerie quiet right now. You know, they're like, we're working, right? But I'm like, no, like, I walk in and I want to feel that. I want to feel something, right? When I walk into dealerships, a lot of dealerships, I feel so sad. I feel sad, man. That's what I feel. I'm just like, what is going on? Like, there's people I'm just walking around and, you know. Oh, yeah. No one's got any passion. I want to see the passion. Because I'll tell you one thing. The, pl the passion bleeds through, okay? You're going to close deals. You're going to sell a lot more cars, okay? Because you want to close with conviction, you got to believe in what you're doing. You got to be doing something much more than just selling another car, or chasing another, one another commission, right? It's got to be about something bigger, right? It's like, you know, I actually want to make an impact on my community. Okay. I actually want to, you know, get a reputation for the top salesperson in my town, right? I want to be known as the person that can, you know, put it, you know, I want you to be able to, to refer your mom to me and feel really, really good about it. Okay. Cause there's definitely a lack of pride. For all of you that have been in the auto business, I can tell you one thing. I, I remember three, four years, right? And I'm like 22, 23. I'm making more money than, than, than most of my family. I'm making more money than my parents, right? 23, 24 years old. And even with the success and the money and the demos and the suits, Thanksgiving dinner, family's around the table. Oh, yeah, Andrew. Yeah, he's in the car business, <laughs> right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am, right? Like, I wasn't proud of it, right? I am now. I wasn't. I was, like, I was lacking a passion in my early days, right? I was lacking a fire, right? I was just working for a paycheck. So new projects. Yeah. Who said Skunk Works? Okay. Do you know what Skunk Works is? Okay. We're gonna, you're going to find out. So, look, new, new projects, right? You guys... You guys got to take on some new projects, some new experiments, we'll call them, okay? This is how you're going to breed innovation. Now, for those of you who don't know what Skunk Works is, there's a definition. It's an experimental laboratory or department of a company or institution that's always smaller. It's a branch off, and it's independent of the main research division. So in companies like Google, Facebook, what the Skunk Works teams are is they're little break-off sessions that's actually mandatory to do. Um, if you work at Google. In fact, it's so mandatory, they force you to do it 20% of your time. So only 80% of the time that you're working at Google, you're doing whatever the job was that you were hired to do. Other 20% is working in Skunk Works teams and projects. These breakout sessions, okay? Innovating with other teammates from other divisions in the company, okay? Quick note, Google Maps came out of a Skunk Working event, right? Because what is this? This is just a team of people, diverse people, just throwing ideas out. Hey, what if we did this? What if we try this? No, that's dumb. Well, that might work, you know? Like, what can we do with the service drive? Like, it's just so flat. You know, how can we get more demos? How can we crank out the trade appraisals going on in the service drive? Just ideas, just throwing out ideas, ideas, whiteboarding, right? So, um, you know, a lot of people think, you know, they, they, they well, look, I can't innovate, Andrew, because we can't just become a tech company, man. Like, this guy doesn't understand. I'm running a dealership, okay? I, we gotta we got sell cars, we gotta do our job. This guy's up there saying, start having breakout sessions. Come spend a day in the dealership. I have, okay? And I'm, t and I'm not telling you it's for eight hours a day to start putting on, uh, you know, having whiteboarding sessions up in the boardroom. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is, take on new projects. Nothing ever starts going full in, all in, right? You gotta assemble a little team, a little innovative team. So we do this at our company, we innovate every single day, 
right? We have weekly meetings with the team. When was the last time in the dealership you guys had a town hall meeting? Everyone, right? The, these dealerships get made up of, they're actually separate companies inside of one company. They operate as like, like separate entities. It's like, oh, that's the service company. Don't call it the department. Like, that's the service company. That's the parts company. That's the sales company. Well, that's the finance company. They hate the sales company, right? <laughs> But it's, 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 it's different, right? It's like, like no, no one's working together here, okay? So a town hall meeting is a meeting when the whole dealership's there. Dealerships should start doing skunk works. They should start doing breakout sessions. I'll tell you how to assemble that. All right, we're going to get three salespeople. No, I want a salesperson. I want a couple of salespeople. I want some advisors. I want a tech. You want a tech? You want to bring a tech out? You want to... Leave, leave them back there. Don't bring the tech out. I want, I want a couple technicians there. I want the detailer there. I'll tell you something, okay? The craziest ideas always come from the people you least expect it. You're going to be in these meetings. You guys are going to be having thought sessions. And, you know, Joey, the detailer, is going to go, hey, what if we did this? And everyone's just going to go, that's, that's actually a pretty good idea, Joey. Okay? Um, because I'm trying to model what all the tech companies are doing. Because here's what I did, guys. I left retail automotive. I left my dealership experience over a decade, and I started a tech company thinking, I'm a closer. I'm a salesman. I'm going to make this work no matter what, right? It didn't work that way, OK? It did not work that way. And um, I needed to actually learn how to run a tech company. And I've been fortunate enough to get mentored by some of the biggest tech companies in Canada and to start working with some of the biggest tech companies in Canada. Okay. By the way, we did that through innovation. We did that when we realized we couldn't take on the competitors head on. So we actually had to think outside the box, get out there and start aligning ourselves with other bigger companies. Right. What do we need when you're a lead generation site? When you, when you generate, we need traffic. Okay. We need traffic. That's what you're paying for. I need traffic. All right? I don't want to just sit here and chip away at just our SEO and domain. I want to partner with other people that have 100 times the traffic we get and piggyback off that. Right? But that was, that was through innovation sessions. We, we were literally sitting there and we were asking the wrong question, by the way. Right? We were just saying, how do we get more leads? You know? How do we get more leads? We need more leads. The demand's through the roof. We can't keep up with the dealer and man. We need more leads. Right? We were asking the wrong questions. We were asking the wrong questions. We are in the age of entrepreneurship. We're in the age of the hustle, right? That's, that's what we see. That's what's put in our face every single day. Um, it's funny when you get into business and you get into the tech companies and you see the way these Facebooks and these Googles and Shopify's when they run it, they're actually really efficient. It's, it's really, really well done. And I had so many epiphanies when I was getting mentored by these tech companies. I'm going, I wish I knew this when I was running the dealership. You know, this would have been really helpful. Like the way that they do this, the way they do these stand-ups and the way they, we break everything into these sprints. Like I actually wish I was running my monthly sales targets in like sprints. I wish I was actually taking some of this, but I didn't know I was never exposed to this world. Right? I'm like, I got to share this with some of my dealer friends. Like this is really good stuff. And that's, how, that's why these guys are changing the world. Like they're, they're, they're just, the, the, the stuff that the, they're creating is, it's changing the world, right? Um, so we're in this age of like entrepreneurship and the hustle and look, if you guys want to create a company, right? Because I, I see a lot of people make this, this jump and I always get this sick feeling sometimes because I'm, I see a lot of like people that like get fed up. They get like fed up with their like their job in automotive and then they want to quit and they want to start their own company, okay? So they, they quit and they, they don't know what they're getting into. And, and I'm here to tell you th there's probably an easier way than starting your own business, okay? Um, probably taking 15 years off my life. So the automotive industry is an industry that's rich in resources, okay? It's rich in real estate and it's rich in expansion and growth, like mindset. Like look at... Look at the dawn of the dealer groups, right? Like how much consolidation has been going on, right? Like everybody's expanding, okay? 
So if you work at a dealership right now and you've got an idea, maybe you've got, maybe you've got a product. Maybe you've got an idea for a product, you thought of it. Okay? Maybe you've had more than one idea for a product and what's happened to you more than once is you thought of it, that'd be a good idea. Six months later, you see somebody doing the same thing you thought about. Has anyone ever experienced that? It's like, I just, I just said that. Raised 100 million, Series B. <laughs> that could have been me. I had the same idea, right? I didn't act. I didn't act on it. But if you're working in a dealership right now and you have an idea for a product, the answer might not be to just quit and go start your own startup, okay? Because you're already in an industry that's full of resources. If you do have an idea, I want you to think of that idea, that business, and I want you to think if there's a way that you could actually apply that to the dealership that you're working at, okay? Because I'll tell you one thing right now, that dealer principal could very much be your angel investor, right? GMs, DPs, they're always looking for for staff to bring them new ideas, right? You could actually change and build a business right inside the dealership. You don't need to quit your job and go chase the hustle that way. You can do it as an entrepreneur right inside of your dealership. Thank you. Thank you.